Cabin Sports Radio. Here comes the siren. I want to go higher. Oh, my goodness. Lecter and unbreakable Mike Gibbons back in the house for the playoff preview edition of Cabin Sports Radio. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good. How was your vacay? Very good. How are you it? Are you refreshed? Refreshed. Rested? Rested. Ready for some NHL playoff action? More than ever. That is pretty much going to dominate the show tonight. We got that. We're going to go through our playoff brackets. We're going to talk to Thorsten Gold of Table Tennis NT and do a little tribute to the man, the myth, the legend, Bob Cole, who called his final game this past Saturday night. All that coming up on Cabin Sports Radio. The CSR Podcast. Cabin Sports Radio brought to you as always by Sport North. Moving sport forward. Check out sportnorth.com for more on them. And for more on the NHL playoffs, all you have to do is sit there and listen for the next hour. That is pretty much what we're going to cover tonight on Cabin Sports Radio. Lecter and Unbreakable Mike Gibbons with you. Uh, We've got our playoff bracket sitting in front of us. Uh, We were slaving away on them, just racking our brains, trying to figure out how these NHL playoffs are going to play out. Mm. And to be quite frank, this is probably one of those episodes where we could probably do with two hours. Because aside from the NHL playoffs, there is a ton happening Mm. in the sports world. But the NHL playoffs kick off on Wednesday, and we need to talk about that and only that. It's just a great time of year. You've got the... NHL playoffs kicking off in two days, like you mentioned. I think the Raptors might have one game left, two games left. So the NBA playoffs just around the corner. We're in to full swing now for a new MLB season. Yep. Uh, the, the summer is approaching. This is probably my favorite time of year as a sports fan. Uh, also, September, always good, too, yep. when you're, you're sort of racking up again, getting ready for a new uh, NHL season, NBA season. I guess more into October. I would put. Uh, I'd say side by side. I probably right? prefer September slightly, yeah. ever so slightly, because you got a little little bit of CFL football That's crossover right. in there. That's right. Just my own personal bias. Winding up to to NFL, and then you've got the wind down of the MLB. You got the fall classic. So really, for me, springtime, fall time, great times of years. Yeah. Um, and playoff hockey just around the corner. So Wednesday nights. We kick off Game 1 of the Blue Jackets Lightning, Pittsburgh Penguins and New York Islanders, the St. Louis Blues and Winnipeg Jets, Dallas Stars, Nashville Predators, and the Las Vegas Golden Knights and San Jose Sharks. That Those games all happening on Wednesday, Game 1 of those series. And then the following night, Thursday night, we've got the Maple Leafs Bruins, Hurricanes Capitals, Avalanche Flames, all game one on Thursday night. I'm not really sure why they're doing five and three, mm. but rather than four and four. Right. But, you know, that's not really that big a deal. Perhaps just uh, arena scheduling conflicts, right. that sort of thing. Um, but elsewhere, in the, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a funny day, actually. Not so much funny. I shouldn't say that. That was the wrong choice of words, as several NHL head coaches lost their jobs. Yeah, that's right. Over the weekend. I'm not laughing because it's funny when people lose their jobs. Mm. Uh, it's just a, it's just, the timing of it is a bit a bit funny, you know, yeah. regular season ends. All right. Why waste time? Let's just get this out of the way. You're gone. And one of those teams have already hired the replacement coach. Really quick. Um, Joe Quenville heading to the uh, Florida Panthers. And that that news broke sort of quickly. Yeah, uh, I think over the weekend, you started to hear rumblings that they were in conversation. They had asked the Chicago Blackhawks who are still paying him for one more year, I believe. believe. so, yeah. Uh, So they asked uh, that team permission if they could speak with Mr. Quenville. Which I don't know why they would have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, take that contract off our hands, by all means. Please do. Uh, So he will now uh, be at the helm for the the Florida Panthers. Buffalo Sabres also relieving. uh, Phil Housley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Uh, I actually can't remember the other one. (laughs) 
Uh, n- not off the top of my head, but it, it's that time of year, right? Yeah. Uh, teams that, that that don't exceed expectations. Buffalo, you you have to think that maybe they they did have that really nice stretch in yeah. the middle of the season, which we know now turned out to be a mirage. Yeah. So, um, wasn't able to to really reach their their full potential. Uh, and Florida was in the mix yeah. for a while. They they could have been a wild card team. They could have snuck in there, but uh, ultimately fell off the pace. Now, yeah. could be a really interesting summer actually on the on the conversation of Florida, uh, linked to two very prominent upcoming. Uh, unrestricted free agents uh, on the same team. Okay, are Tammy Panarin and Sergei Bobrovsky. Yes, uh, yes, there there have been some links made uh, between there. The two countrymen have said they want to remain together, uh, and that's that's a, a team that's that's come up. So preferably somewhere somewhere nicer than Columbus. Than Columbus, who we'll get to, who so, will be out soon. <laughs> so they're not heading to Winnipeg. Is what no, you're saying? No, uh, no, I love you, Winnipeg. Ah, calm down. Uh, so, yeah, there is actually lots to talk about other than the NHL playoffs, but we're going to have some fun tonight, and we are going to fill out our brackets live on this show right now. Mike, you were slaving away at your bracket. I can't see what you got over there. How are you feeling about your bracket right now? The, you know what? They're, they're actually a couple series, even in the first round, that I would say are pretty close to toss-ups. Yeah. Um, I might have in years past... Uh, I don't think Boston Toronto is going seven this year. Um, yeah, <laughs> in, in favor of the Bruins. I'm sorry. Uh, a couple fun ones like the the Islanders Pittsburgh could be pretty fun. Yeah, and the Western Conference San Jose Vegas has all the makings to be an excellent mm-hmm. first round series. Uh, who knows? The Stars could give the Preds uh, some trouble, and St. Louis. The other than the Tampa Bay Lightning, who of course had a historic season. Yeah. Um, were the second best team in the entire NHL for the second half of the season. It was a team that was in last place on Christmas Day. Um, so they're really hot. They could give Winnipeg a really good run, too. We're in store for, don't get me wrong, up to three of those series may be complete laughers. Um, yeah. I'm predicting at least one sweep, maybe even okay. two. All right. um, but we should have some some really hotly contested ones as well. There is a very good reason why I don't gamble. Mm. I look at something like this, and I follow hockey. I watch it all the time. Yeah. I'm pretty familiar with how all these teams stack up against one another. I look at a bracket, and I'm just like, I, uh, yeah. I, and I and I am traditionally awful at it. So, yeah. as you mentioned, uh, some of these series could be laughers. My entire bracket could be a laugh. Yeah, totally. But let's go. Let's find out how this goes. So let's start in the Western Conference because we always start with the East. So mm. nuts to that. Let's start with the West for once. First series, we have the Calgary Flames first overall in the Western Conference in the Pacific Division taking on the number two seeded wildcard team, the Colorado Avalanche. Mm. Mike, what are you thinking? I, I've got Calgary. Okay. Um, I don't envision it being a particularly long series i don't think it will be a sweep maybe mm. maybe give the uh the avalanche a game maybe yeah. two okay uh so so the flames did win the season series three games to none right uh very strong up front uh quite deep uh good on the back end i think the one question mark for me and a uh, spoiler alert i do not have them going to the western conference finals oh uh, is is probably their goaltending. Okay. Um, so I, yep. I think over on the season, Mike Smith posted a sub-900 save percentage. And there was that time that he was sharing the crease with uh, Riddick, yep. uh, David Riddick, uh, who's unproven. Um, so if I guess I'm nitpicking here, but if there is one question mark, if you will, uh, an explosive team, a really fun yeah. team, great year, surpassed all expectations, mm-hmm. uh, it would be on the, on the back end. In spite of all that. Mm-hmm. Like you just said, the goaltending, a question mark, and, yeah. you know, had its ups and downs throughout the season. Yeah. And they still looked so solid yeah. and just ran away with the Western Conference yeah, in spite of, uh, of of potential instability yeah. in the crease. Um, I agree with you. They That is a uh, that is kind of a, uh, a red flag mm. a little bit for the Calgary Flames. I do, however, and I don't know, I haven't seen if they've confirmed whether or not David Riddick or Mike Smith will be starting yeah. in Game 1. I have. don't know if you've seen yourself. No, I don't think it's it's been confirmed yet. That was sort of the question mark. Okay, my my gut feeling, my assumption would be that you start Mike Smith. Yes, yes. You start with uh, a vet, a yeah. guy who has, who has played in very uh, high-pressure situations before. 
not not a ton of playoff experience for a guy his age, but he has played in some in some double IHF World Championships representing mm. Team Canada. He has played in some uh, some very uh, you know high pressure type of games. So I think and and he's such a competitive guy that I think he's one of those guys that is going to he's going to raise his is the level of his game. Mm. I think. You know, maybe I, I think he's got the mental, uh, the mental strength to be able to put a subpar regular season behind him, reset, mm-hmm. and go into these playoffs fresh. And I, I feel like we will see a different Mike Smith yeah. starting for the Calgary Flames. I think he's going to look real good. Um, I feel like Colorado is riding a lot of momentum heading uh, the, the the last half of the season. Uh, they were arguably one of the best teams in the NHL kind of came out of nowhere mm-hmm. to to get back into the playoff uh the playoff conversation after everyone kind of thought they were left for dead right you know they had that great first first half of the season they just plummeted and then we all kind of thought they were done for and yeah. then lo and behold they are the second wild card team i think that's going to be enough to win them two games but i am taking the calgary flames yeah. in six in that series i i agree i, I would be shocked I think if, if Riddick does get the start in game one, you're probably going to ride uh, Mike Smith. Uh, tale of two seasons, really, for a lot of the teams in this bracket. Um, I would throw sort of Winnipeg almost in there, the Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. St. Louis, for sure, yep. uh, who, who turned it around in their favor. Colorado, like you said, out of the gate really hot for a time. Had the best line in all of hockey yeah. in uh, Ranson and Had the top uh, two scorers yeah, in the NHL. <laughs> uh, Nate McKinnon and, and Gabriel Landeskog. Tapered off a little bit, but I mean, all all three of them posting, I, I believe, north of seventy five points. Mm. McKinnon one point away from a, a hundred point season, uh, so very top heavy. Yeah. Um, and then and then again, like how, how far is is Varlamov going to take them? Um, so yeah, I get I give them I give them two games at the most. Uh, a very top heavy team, if you can shut down that top line or at least minimize their chances or neutralize them as much as possible. Um, Calgary should should fare pretty well. Okay, second series. We got the San Jose Sharks, the second seed in that Pacific Division against third seeded the Las Vegas Golden Knights. What are you thinking for that series? Ooh, this for me, this is the ultimate toss up. Uh I can I can definitely see this one going seven games. Nice already that they've established a geographic rivalry, mm. but uh it's it's a pretty good rivalry between San Jose and Las Vegas, not too far apart from from one another already. Right. Um, Pavelski and Carlson both returning to form. Uh, they should be rested, hopefully, after coming off of injuries. Um, Vegas really started to click after the uh, Mark Stone signing and, and subsequent extension. Um, and they, I think a lot of people uh, probably had them as maybe not front runners, but contenders in the Western Conference at the start of the season. They mm-hmm. maybe even solidified that a little bit more uh, with the, the Stone signing. Uh, Flurry, yeah, he can he can be inconsistent, but he took them all the way to the dance last year. He proved uh, last year he still got it. Yep, he yeah. certainly did, and then some. He was excellent. Um, I think he led all goaltenders in shutouts this year. They can they can shut you down. This will be a really fun series. I can definitely see it going uh, seven games. I I do have Vegas prevailing. You got Vegas. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, this was tough. Very tough. This is, uh, well, I guess it's only the second series we've talked about, but it is uh, the first one we are differing on. Yep. I, and you could just be sour grapes, which is never a good way to direct your betting. Uh, However, I think the honeymoon is over for the Las Vegas Vegas Golden Knights. Mm. I think they were riding a wave of magic last year. Ah, yes. Not, I mean, obviously a good team. They've, They've made the playoffs two years in a row one year removed from being an expansion franchise so they are they're no they're no nonsense they're nothing yeah. to laugh about for sure but i think san jose is just too good mm-hmm. they they've proven any critics wrong who thought maybe this is the year that they finally prove themselves a bit too old and a bit too slow mm-hmm. they only got faster on the back end of course adding eric carlson at the start of the year i think San Jose is just a bit too talented yeah. for Las Vegas. I think it'll be a seven game series. I think, like you said, it's mm-hmm. gonna be it's it's gonna be a fun one to watch. But I I've got the San Jose Sharks grinding this one out in seven against Las Vegas. Yeah. It 
almost easy to to forget too. And, and getting to the Nashville series next, a team that's only two years removed away from going all the way to the final. San Jose is is three years removed away. They went all the way to yeah. the finals in uh, against the the Pittsburgh Penguins, ultimately losing um, in 2016. Most of that core still intact. I think a lot of people have them pretty close to, if not at the top of the Western Conference at the onset of the season with the Eric Carlson signing. For sure, yeah. This truly was the hardest series for me yeah. to pick. Um, and I think that whoever comes out of this series probably has a very good chance of, of coming out of the Pacific and then facing whoever comes out of the Central to go all the way to the finals. Sorry if that sounds like me not giving a whole lot of love to the Flames, um, but I think the winner of this series stands a pretty good chance. I was going to say, isn't that really telling that a Toronto Maple Leafs fan found this the hardest series uh, to call? I'm, I'm not a believer. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. All right, on to the next series. First seeded in the Central Division, Nashville Predators against the first wildcard team spot, the Dallas Stars. Mike, what are you thinking? I uh, I have Nashville advancing. Okay. Um, they did finish the season fairly hot. I, I believe sort of uh, rounded out a little bit, uh, returned to form, uh, winning seven of their last ten, I think, uh, which is good. That's when you want to start peaking. Yep. Um and then ultimately did get that uh, that first spot in the in the central division. So I do have them beating Dallas. They could give them some fits, um, but I, I I say another five six. Let's say we'll say six. Yeah, I'm pretty Nashville much six. I'm pretty much exactly on the same page as you there. Um, the fact that yeah Nashville really turned it on towards the back half of that last you know ten or so game stretch, uh, eventually helping them to uh, to clinch the first place in the central division and uh, knock the Jets down to second place. I think that is only going to do wonders for their confidence, and mm. this is a team that has no reason to be anything but confident yeah. heading into yet another NHL playoffs as the first seed in the Central Division. I agree with you, Nashville, and I'll go five because I just yeah. don't have much faith in Dallas. How how far can Ben Bishop take you? Uh, he, he he did have a good season, yeah. and that this is the time of year where a goaltender can steal one, if not multiple, wins for you if, yeah. if you if you don't have the offense flowing um but I, I i ultimately think they'll be overpowered yeah and i mean from my perspective i mean we know that nashville is a team that is built to grind it out with anybody uh that you know that they've got they've they're a very well-rounded team they've got uh they've got the goaltend the goaltending is the only question mark even though pecorine has yeah. got all the accolades you know he's won the he's won a vezina trophy He's been one of the top goalies statistically in the league for the past five, six, seven, you know, you count him how many years now. There's just something about him in those crucial moments. Now, I, I don't know that Dallas is the team to put Nashville in a crucial moment type mm -hmm. of situation. I feel like the rest of the Nashville team is better enough than Dallas that they're going to handle. And yeah. it's not going to come down to Pecorine winning games for them. But there is still that X factor leading into future series. But for this first round series, yeah, I don't see Dallas taking no. more than one game against Nashville. Maybe a win for themselves to even make the postseason after was yeah. it their CEO said they they were their star players yes. were playing like a bunch of horse manure, <laughs> yeah. horse turd. That's, and that's, that's that, not the word he said. No, but. no, it's it's not. Uh you're you're being kind. Mm. Um and that's another thing too, is I, I just still I think Dallas has the talent. Mm. I still don't think that their core has the heart no. to get it done in in playoff hockey. Yeah, you, you know? would have thought they would have bro broken through the ceiling at this point, and we just haven't, yeah. we just haven't seen it yet. No, exactly. So I uh, have no reason to believe Nashville in five. Mm. Uh, and finally, rounding out the Western Conference first round, the second seed Central Division Winnipeg Jets against the third seed St. Louis Blues. Mike, what do you got? Ooh. You're not going to like Don't worry this one. about hurt no, feelings. You're Go not, ahead. Go you're ahead. not going to like this one. I, I another tight, tightly contested series. I, I I do have St. Louis prevailing, uh, riding on the backs of a phenomenal campaign from uh, Jordan Bennington, right? Uh, whose story just continues to unravel. And, yeah. and this is the time of year uh, we talked about Matt Murray, uh, mm. the the two consecutive runs the Penguins had in in sixteen and. 17 where he just came out of absolutely nowhere and yeah. then won two consecutive Stanley Cups. Uh star goaltender can steal you a series uh, and can win you a Stanley Cup. And he has had a absolutely remarkable run. 24-5 and 1, led the league in goals against average. 
Um, just crazy numbers. And and a team like we were talking about earlier, a, 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 a two two stories really um, came out of the gate. There were rumblings of, of if there were coaching changes that needed to happen. Tarasen- and there was one at the, yeah. uh, the start of the year. Yeah, yeah. Tarasenko, uh, you, yes. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, Tarasenko came out of the gate really slowly. Yeah. Um, and then, like we said off the top, other than Tampa Bay, the best team in all of hockey after the 41-game mark, the halfway mark, uh, last place on Christmas, um, and have turned things around in remarkable fashion. Um, I do think it will be very close, mm. six or seven, uh, but I, I do have St. Louis winning, and, and I'll actually say seven. Okay. Um, fair enough. Yeah, the, I mean, it, it's it's pretty hard to argue with that for you know a team that for the second half of the season now has essentially been playing playoff hockey. Mm-hmm. They've been playing do or die yeah. uh, for the last 40 or so games now. And like you said, they, they, they've made an incredible run. They've got a hot goaltender. Who uh, who is coming in with just you know oozing of confidence yeah. right now? There's no reason for the St. Louis Blues not to feel like they can win this series, and yeah. they absolutely can win this series, especially because the Winnipeg Jets have been largely coasting mm-hmm. through the second half of the season. It now eventually after the last game of the season co- cost them the first seed yep. in the Central Division. Yeah, so that's uh, but I think, and I mean this could just be a bit of homerism. I don't know. I think that is going to piss them off a bit, yeah, yeah. for lack of a better expression. They have an incredible leadership group. I think the world of Blake Wheeler, yes. Mark Shifley, Dustin Bufflin, and Paul Maurice behind the bench. Mm-hmm. Nothing to say, not, not saying anything about St. Louis's leadership group. They've got a great group there, too. But Winnipeg was there, conference finals, yes. last year with the same core largely the same team as last year they've added and subtracted a few different pieces yeah but the core is basically the same they're a year older they're a year stronger they're a year more experienced and more mature and i think that this is a team that is in a place where they can take the adversity that and i mean you could say they've brought it on themselves through just not playing the soundest hockey it's also been partially due to injury they've had josh morrissey out for the last i think month at least mm-hmm. maybe month and a half dustin bufflin missed like largely the last two months of the season uh and and a few other injuries of guys coming yeah. in and out on the blue line that you know did did have a major effect on the team's momentum during that last half of the season stretch not that that's an excuse. You still got to find a way to get it done. Yeah. I mean, they still found a way to obviously stay in first place in the Central until the very last moment. But I think this is a team that has enough to figure it out. They've gone through some adversity. I think that that should be only good for them. Mm-hmm. And they've done it before. Like I said, this group is still together there. And I think they're... I think they may be a better team overall than they were last year. So for that reason, and a bit of homerism, mm. I am taking the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, and you know what? I'll I'll go seven games yeah. for that one, too. I don't think St. Louis is going to go away easily. But yes, I will take the Winnipeg Jets in seven. I, I do think very highly of the Winnipeg Jets. And they are a team that I've always... Just their makeup. I've always considered them... A playoff team. Yeah. They're built for the playoffs. Uh, the big, they've got skill right up and down the lineup. They've got speed, size right up and down the lineup. A strong back end. Uh, Connor Hellebuck had a great season last year. He's someone who can be reliable. Um, so, yeah, if there is a team that could flip the switch with, like you said, the leadership group that they have, that's a team that I would look at and say, yes, maybe they can turn things around. They uh, have not been playing very well of late. Uh, pretty pedestrian going into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they're a team that could stand up to a, a really hot streaking team in the St. Louis Blues. Um, a game that I de- a series that I definitely see going to seven could really be a coin toss in the last one. I suppose I'm just riding the hotter team. That's fair. You know what? Betting man, that's a smart way to go. Who's peaking at the right time? Absolutely. You're listening to Cabin Sports Radio, brought to you by Sport North, moving sport forward. Welcome back to Cabin Sports Radio. Joining us on the phone right now, the, as far as I know, the first member of the Three Timers Club 
on Cabin Sports Radio. Thorsten Gold, the executive executive director of Table Tennis NT, joins us on Cabin Sports Radio. How are you doing today, Thor? I'm doing great today. Uh, it has been a good day getting things done and uh, promoting the sport. What else can you do? You're up in uh, Fort Providence, correct? Yes, I'm up in Fort Providence. I just came back from the Yukon, and uh, we had a great time there. But it's also nice to be back. We have a few coaches now here with us uh, in the Detro region, so we're going to go out and uh, play some table tennis. Okay, busy as always. You are uh, pretty constantly on the road, spreading the good cheer of table tennis. Uh, what's going on these days? Um, I think we need to keep the, the spirit and the excitement from the Canada Games going. Our kids were absolutely amazing. Uh, they had the best time of their lives, and so did we. We definitely made the atmosphere at the Canada Games in the table tennis venue. And uh, now going to the Yukon last week, uh, where we start to try and promote more, they still remembered us going there. So that was very exciting. Um, last week, we went to the to the Yukon, especially to Whitehorse and um, the surrounding regions to uh, promote the sport as well and just to showcase that we should come together more and more as um, the uh, territories in the north in the north and um, promote the sport because it's it's what i call it the sport of the north it's something that you can do summer winter and wherever you are so absolutely you've uh you've obviously you've seen table tennis grow exponentially here in the nwt uh really since your arrival um you know it was doing all right before then but you've had a kind of a uh, an unwavering dedication to seeing the sport grow uh what do you see going on in yukon right now with table tennis um i think it's it's very similar to us that um they have a big hub where it's in white horse that's where the main club is and then there's not much else happening for us it's slightly different because we have a lot of things going on in the communities like fort Sim- uh, fort smith fort simpson as well hey river and fort providence and other communities where we, we, we know that there is table. So um, the the level is approximately the same. Um, the kids have the same idea. They started maybe a year ago, half a year ago. So it's new to them. And again, I think now with the Canada winds, wind, uh, wind that we have in our sails, I mean, now we're going to prepare maybe for the Canadian Championships coming up in July. And then hopefully we're going to go on into the accident against in uh, next year in March and vice versa. Okay, so you gave me uh, a little prep sheet about what's going on <laughs> uh, with your your uh, schedule in the very near future. You've got aerobic table tennis down here. What is that? Yeah, so it's um, it's uh, we have Steve Rowe here from the UK, and he does uh, the table tennis movements to the music, and it's an aerobic work workout where we combine both the sport with the music. And it's, it's just a lot of fun and great to see the kids because every time they do it, they smile. They do their sidestepping. They do the forehand movement, the backhand movement. They bounce with balloons or balls. And it's just something that we can get the kids into the sport and then get them uh, hooked. And then hopefully later on they can play a little bit more. Okay, so kind of just like approaching it from uh, from a dis- different perspective to start with, kind of welcoming them in with exercise, with table tennis being the central feature, and then hoping that uh, it translates into an interest in table tennis from there. Is that sort of the idea? That's absolutely it. And so whatever they do, they have the paddle in their hand, and they learn how to hold the paddle and all these. They do little bouncing skills, so they get their hand-eye coordination in place. So, yeah, exactly what you said. Okay, um, and so you mentioned already that you got the Canadian Table Tennis Championships coming up uh, in, yeah. in, the, in the Northwest Territories next year. What's going on with that? So um, it's, um, what's going to happen is right now PEI will host the Junior National Championships, and we don't have any information yet, but hopefully soon that will come out, and then uh, our kids will try out to make that team and then participate in July. And the other thing is that it's for me a long-term plan is to actually host the Canadian Championships for table tennis. So that's on the radar, um, and we need to figure out how we can do that in the in the next little while, hopefully even next year. Um, what needs to happen is I'm putting a proposal together to the members of the federation, mm-hmm. and then at the next AGM in June, they will then decide where it's going to be hosted next. Okay. And so hopefully, again, it will be in the Northwest Territories. 
Do you have uh, any inkling or any preferences? I mean, you mentioned this is, like you said, uh, a sport for the North where you can pretty much do it anywhere, anytime. Do you have any any preferences, though, as where you'd like to see that uh, that championship be hosted? Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good point. And I thought about Hay River um, because they just had the new recreation center and they, they just hosted the Canada, the Active Winter Games. And just keeping that spirit going, it was such a great event, so many amazing volunteers and how it all came together. And then using that beautiful facility that is now in place, I think that's the goal definitely to do it there. Um, and then if we can get it for two years in a row, maybe we can find another location. And I think it would be a fantastic idea to host the national championships in the of Territory. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, finally, just uh, what, what's going on with you? How's life? <laughs> That's a good question. Life is good. Um, I enjoy the winters as much as most people might not like it as much. <laughs> and if you see me running around at minus 40 in shorts, that's, that's just how I am and how I enjoy the winter. <laughs> For the rest, everything is good. It's nice to see a lot of kids, of smi- uh, smiles on kids, uh, seeing it all over the north. And I think, yeah. It's all about coming together, and it's all about true north. That's what I call it. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately for you, the weather is slowly getting milder as we uh, head through spring and towards summer. But luckily for you, you've got lots on your plate, lots keeping you busy, so uh, the weather shouldn't get you down too much, right? (laughs) Exactly. Thank you. (laughs) Awesome. Always great to hear from you, uh, Thor, and thank you so much for joining us tonight on Cabin Sports Radio. And thanks for having me. That is the tireless Thorsten Goal, Executive Director of Table Tennis NT. And you can always catch up, or rather keep up, with what's going on with Thorsten and Table Tennis in the North by checking out www.tabletennisnorth.ca. The Cabin Sports Radio Podcast, brought to you by Sport North. Moving sport forward. Cabin Sports Radio brought to you by Sport North, moving sport forward, taking a look. Actually, before we get into the uh, the Eastern Conference of our uh, first round NHL playoff predictions here, I want to just give a quick shout out to Kevin Cooey, who uh, picked up a silver medal at the World Curling Championship, uh, unfortunately defeated in the final by Sweden's rank Nicholas Eden, uh, 7-2, to which is is a pretty incredible story on its own. Obviously unfortunate uh, that, that Kevin Cooey lost, but Nicholas Eden now won his fourth career World Curling Championship. He is the only non-Canadian in history to achieve that feat. So great job, Cooey team, and uh, congratulations to the uh, Swedish team and skip Nicholas Eden. All right, enough of that. Back into the NHL playoffs. We head over to the Eastern Conference. We went through our Western Conference picks. We had Calgary, San Jose, Nashville, and Winnipeg coming out of the first round series. And now we head to the East. Starting off with the number one overall seed, the undisputed champions of the regular season. And not even close, really. No. The Tampa Bay Lightning, the best team in the NHL by far. The (laughs) record-tying NHL yeah. club, sixty-two wins, facing off against the second wild card team, Columbus Blue Jackets, who just <laughs> snuck into the playoffs and broke the hearts of Montreal Canadiens fans yeah. everywhere, and uh, really uh, kind of saved face with uh, going all in at the NHL trade deadline. You might remember oh, yes. everyone thought they might be sellers; they turned out to be big time buyers, and. Uh, you got to say it's paid off now. They've made it into the playoffs, and now anything can happen. But first round, facing the best team by far in the NHL, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Mike, what do you got? Well, you said it might be. A, I think it's definitely a win for the, the Blue Jackets uh, to get four more games. Yeah. Which is exactly what they'll get. <laughs> um, uh, this one. Ouch. This one will not be close. Uh, Tampa Bay was just simply... In another league, it was it was laughable. By about the midway point of the season, it actually became laughable. Yeah, and one point that almost feels like it's not being talked about enough is twenty five year old Nikita Kucherov scoring a hundred and twenty eight <sighs> points. Yeah, besting even Connor McDavid by a dozen points. It's just silly. I think to even have a hundred point campaign is awesome. Yeah, uh, players like Goudreau. McKinnon missing out by one point. That's a significant benchmark. 
128 points, the most since Mario Lemieux in 95, the most in a season by a Russian player ever. It's just silly. It's honestly unheard of in the modern era. Yeah, and then you've got a team that racks up 62 wins, 128 points of their own. This one will not be close. Uh, You mentioned uh, the Blue Jackets going all in, a team we thought would be sellers at the trade deadline, acquiring uh, Dezingle, uh, Duchesne, McQuaid, uh, they made some moves, yep. um, and it got them the eighth seed and a matchup with the best team in the league. Uh, this might be a sweep. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this might be a sweep at most five. I don't even know if I'm giving them one. Tampa's just on another level. Yeah, I, I can't say I disagree with you on anything you just said. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning were so good this season mm-hmm. that it just honestly didn't look fair. No. The last game that they played against the Toronto Maple Leafs last week, in which the Leafs actually looked really good. Yeah. And the game could have gone either way, which kind of gave me hope for the, we'll get to the Boston-Toronto yep. first round series. It kind of gave me hope that if the Leafs can actually make it out of that series, I like how they match up against Tampa Bay. Yeah. They do match up better than Boston. Yeah. It, it seems like. They've got very similar sort of blueprints for yes. how they play the game. Um, but then they just sort of flipped the switch, and they were missing some guys, I think, in that game, too. I don't know if they were resting. Yeah. The the this, the last quarter of the season was virtually meaningless. They wrapped up the President's Trophy with, like, probably more than 10 games to go. Yeah. Um, and made it look so easy. Yeah, yeah. And They're, even um, beat the the Bruins in their, what could have been a nice sort of, you know, litmus test heading into the playoffs, and they beat them 6-3. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're just on another level. There was one play in which, and, and Freddie Anderson actually made a, a fantastic save on the play, but there was one play in which Nikita Kucherov had the puck in the Leafs' corner, and he had three Leafs yeah. so focused on him, and he dangled two of them, didn't even look back, and somehow made a no-look backhand pass across the zone to uh, to Sergachev, yeah. who was wide open. At no point in during this play did he even look. Yeah, I don't know how he even knew he was there. It's like he honestly had eyes on the back of his mm-hmm. head. Puts it right there for a one-timer. Sergachev hit the shot. Anderson, like I said, actually made a fantastic save on the play, but it was just one of those plays where I was just, this guy is on another level. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, he is so good. And just, yeah, just yeah. unbelievable hockey player. Like you said, uh, I don't give the Columbus Blue Jackets a whole lot of hope in this one. I don't think they match up particularly well against Tampa Bay. I don't really know that the Columbus Blue Jackets have an identity as a team mm-hmm. right now. They've got some skill. They've got a little bit of grit. But, I, you know, we, you brought in Matt Deshane, that That added to the skill. But I don't necessarily know where the the power and leadership dynamics. Nick Foligno yeah. is the captain. He has been for a few years, but I just don't get the sense that there's necessarily a solid structure no. to this team still. And and on top of all that, they are playing the undisputed best team yeah. in the league. Like you say, they'll be lucky if they win one game. I'll take Tampa Bay in yeah four or yeah. five. Uh, second round, uh, second rather matchup uh, series. The Boston Bruins, the second seed in the uh, Atlantic Division against the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is a series we have known for the better (laughs) half of the last two months was going to happen. It was inevitable. And as Leafs fans, we have been dreading it. Uh, Installment number three since 2013. We know how version 2013 and version 2018 ended. Uh, The Toronto Maple Leafs going down 3-1 in both series, storming back to tie the series, taking a lead into the third period. One of them they lose in overtime, the other... What was the final last year? 6-3 or something like that. Yeah. They decided to score four goals in the third or something like that. They collapsed again. Yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, They're good at that. (laughs) Um, But like you said, this is a matchup we've we've known for a while now. The head games have already started. Brad Marchand has been uh, vocal on the the Twitterverse, just trolling where he can. Uh, Pasternak uh, quoted in the past saying he loves to score on the Maple Leafs. (laughs) <laughs> and why not? He 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 does it. And a he lot. does it so well. But the story was supposed to be different this year. Yes, and it's not. Mm-hmm. After getting the biggest fish in free agency in in John Tavares, seemingly solidifying the back end with the Jake Muzzin deal, uh, and one more year of growth. Uh, the story was supposed to be different this time with yeah. a, with a a Boston team that largely has the same roster. Um, yep. But they have, I think the undisputed best line in hockey mm-hmm. in in Patrice Bergeron. 
uh, Brad Marchand and, and David Pasternak. Just a complete 200-foot game for all all three of them. Yeah, uh, Couldn't ask for a better center in in uh, Bergeron and what he gives you on both both ends of the rink, uh, a sniper. And then you got Brad Marchand, who eclipsed the 100-point yep. total on the season. Career year. Um, what are you going to get from Rass, though? Um, you know, he's and he, sharing the crease a little bit with Halak um, for for most of the season, anyways. But you know, they're 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 in terms of keeping pucks out of the net, they're as good as anyone. Well, and that's another thing that makes the Bruins so dangerous. Yeah. Is if Rask isn't on his game, you got Yaroslav Alak, a guy who has taken a team yeah. to the conference finals before, yeah. the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. And has some playoff experience, you know, even beyond that. This is a veteran guy who is a still a, a nearly top tier goaltender. Yeah. He's only not a top tier because he's a backup. Yeah. Uh, so they they certainly sit in better position than the Leafs in that regard because yeah. if Frederick Anderson goes down or can't get the job done, yeah, you don't have a whole lot of hope for Michael Hutchinson. And Michael Hutchinson is an okay backup goaltender. Yeah, he's not going to take a series by storm and steal it. For no, you. and and Anderson's been very human after a real the, the Leafs came out. It was a great start. They had a really hot out of the gate. Anderson was playing Vesna hockey really for the yeah. first for the first half of the season really tapered off since and with that the Leafs have have struggled Mm -hmm. um and I think the goal differential in the back half of the season the Leafs are honestly pretty close to even the Bruins I I think they're 20th in the league in the back half the Bruins are three and that that tells you the story right there they really turned it on in the second half yeah uh keeping pucks out of their net uh we know they're a great defensive team with with the growth of McAvoy Zdeno Char is always going to be a force um, and and they can get good goaltending, and then you put it all together. Maybe not as deep. I mean, if if you're if you're a Maple Leafs fan trying to find an edge, maybe not quite as deep up front. Mm. That's why I think if you're looking for an X factor, if Matthews is not matched up with that Bergeron line, right? They really need him. Yeah, and they really need Kapanen. Uh, and the secondary scoring has to be an edge for the Toronto Maple Leafs to have a chance. And there's been some talk about the fourth line lately. They have been playing yeah. pretty well. Mm. Um, can that be a potential edge for you in a series that could go pretty deep? Yeah. Um, if I do have the Boston Bruins winning, and I actually have them winning in, in six games rather than uh, seven, as we've seen in the last two installments. Um, but it, it should be pretty pretty tight. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Overall, I th- I have the Boston Bruins winning that series as well. I just think they are too sound defensively, mm-hmm. and the Leafs are too sloppy defensively. Yeah. And again, like you say, uh, defense obviously wins championships to begin with, but on top of that, the Bruins also boast, like you said, the best line, arguably, yeah. in the entire NHL. Um, I do think there is an interesting storyline that... With the addition of John Tavares, Austin Matthews is no longer the guy. Mm-hmm. Last year, of course, they were able. The Boston Bruins were able to key on Austin yeah. Matthews. They were they grinded on him, and you had a twenty year old kid who had, you know, arguably the expectations of the entire team on his shoulders, yeah. and you really saw that effect. Yeah. He was not no. He was not at his peak uh, performance. Mitch Marner looked fantastic for the Leafs, but he could not. Uh, he could not carry the team on no. his own, and Matthews could not seem to really get it together. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting year where, yes, you have the addition of, like you said, the the big fish in the free agency pool, John Tavares, a a a, a premier top-line elite center mm-hmm. on any team. He is going to add another element to this team, and hopefully you can see that Hopefully, we'll see that free up Austin Matthews and see him be able to flourish this year as opposed to last year. If that doesn't happen, if Austin Matthews doesn't really pick this team up and say, no, yeah. we are going to win this series because we are the more skilled team, mm-hmm. I don't give the Toronto Maple Leafs much of a chance. No, And I agree with you. Overall, I'm thinking they can win two I think Frederick Anderson needs to steal at least one or two games yeah. for them to have a chance to win this series. But overall, I don't think they're going to. I will say also Boston in six. On to the next series into the uh, the Metropolitan Met- Division, 
We have got the Washington Capitals, who ended up the first seed in that division. Who knew how that was going to turn mm-hmm. out? But the Washington Capitals finally emerged the first seed in the Metropolitan, and they are taking on the bunch, bunch of jerks. Big jerks. <laughs> the first wild card scene, the Carolina Hurricanes in round one. Mike, what do you got? I ultimately have the Stanley Cup uh, defending champions coming out in this one. Uh, the next two series, I guess we're, we're breaking down here, probably the two best storylines. Um, mm. You got the, the Carolina Hurricanes, who made hockey fun again <laughs> uh, with all their post-game antics, right? Like getting getting people talking about hockey in Carolina, which yeah. they might not have been doing otherwise. Yeah. Um, but I think this is where that magical season comes to an end. Um I think they'll. It should be a fun series. Um, five or six. I I, I have the uh, the Capitals prevailing in six games. Okay. Uh, I don't disagree with you. I think Washington is the is clearly the better team in this series. I only hope that Washington or that Carolina rather takes game three or game four just because I want to see what they do. Yeah. I want to see the post game celebration. I think they said they wouldn't, but we'll see. Oh, I mean, we'll see. Right? We'll like see. that would be a, a monumental win. Uh, not really much of a hangover for the the Capitals. They were steady. They weren't. Yeah. They weren't. They didn't have an exceptional campaign, but they had a se- a steady, solid season. Yeah. Um, and we know they've done it. They they've done it before. So I give them the edge. Experience uh, prevails in this one. Yeah. And I will take uh, also Washington in five games. And so finally. Wrapping up our first round series is the Eastern Conference Pittsburgh Penguins, the third seed against the New York Islanders, who uh, were able to hang around. They they were looking like they were going to be the first seed mm-hmm. in the Metropolitan Division for uh, for quite a while, but they uh, they had some ups and downs, which could help them down the long run. They faced some adversity this season and have come out a legit playoff team. They are the second seed, and they face. Well, the always dangerous yeah. Pittsburgh Penguins. Mike. I Another close series. I do have Pittsburgh. Um, and like you said, the always dangerous. Yeah. And they're just uh, reintroducing uh, Malkin into the fold. I think he had some injuries towards the end of the season. He gets injected back into the lineup. Uh, they had another injury to one of their, their top six forwards. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I, but I said the, two of the best stories uh, in the NHL coming out of this Metropolitan Division, Carolina being one. New York being one, they made the playoffs, and that is a win in itself in their first season without their captain, yep. uh, John Tavares. Uh, Barzell had another great campaign. Barry Trotz, formerly of the Washington Capitals, uh, in his first year, an excellent season for the New York uh, Islanders. Nothing to sneeze at uh, if they're eliminated in the first round. Uh, they could be good for, for years to come. Mm. Um, but like you said, the always dangerous Pittsburgh Penguins uh, that's a tough first round matchup. Um, really deep down the middle, as we know, can hurt you in a lot of different ways. Yeah, Matt Murray's done it twice now. Um, I, I, I just again, I think, I think experience prevails in this one. Yep, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, Pittsburgh still largely the same core that won back to back Stanley Cups. Um, all, all with the Sidney Crosby, you know, for all for all intents and purposes. Certainly now that the Edmonton Oilers are not in the Stanley Cup playoffs is once again the best player in the world. Mm-hmm. I think that is still undisputed until someone definitively who <laughs> can regularly contribute in the playoffs takes yeah. that crown from him. So I and, but another storyline you mentioned interesting storylines in this season regarding the New York Islanders specifically. Another one I really like was the uh, redemption story for Robin Leonard. Uh, yes. The goaltender yeah. who uh, had a really rough campaign last year in Buffalo. A lot of uh, personal problems off the ice that uh, were really affecting his life and, and his career. And it seemed like he, he might have been done, but uh, they, the, Lou Lamorello put some faith in him, brought him over to the island, and uh, and he had a fastic, uh, fantastic redemption uh, season here. So as much as I like that, like that story and I like what the Islanders have done, they've come together in you know the face of adversity, like you say, losing their best player, their yeah. longtime captain, captain and John Tavares, it'd be very easy, or it would have, down the stretch of the season, for them to use that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. They didn't do that. Instead, they just put together a fantastic season and uh, made the NHL playoffs. But 
I think that's where it ends. The Pittsburgh Penguins just have too much skill yeah. and too much experience. I am going to give the Islanders, I'm going to go seven. I said seven, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. 11 combined shutouts for uh, Thomas Grice and Leonard on the season. Yeah. So really solid on the back end. So it looks like uh, we disagreed on two. We, disagreed we, on two. We yeah. agree on six. We disagree on two. Okay. Um, but there there should be some pretty fun, pretty close first round matchups. We will continue to follow this on Cabin Sports Radio as we go along, how our brackets develop. We have them in front of us. We have them all filled out right to the Stanley Cup Finals. That's but right. uh, we will see how it goes as the NHL playoffs progress. Wednesday. All kicks off very much looking forward to another fun season of playoff hockey. The CSR Podcast. This past Saturday night on Hockey Night in Canada, Bob Cole, the legendary longtime play-by-play broadcaster on Hockey Night in Canada, Bob Cole called his final game. We will not get to hear him as part of these NHL playoffs, which is uh, a bit of a landmark because we have grown up with Bob Cole, much as previous generations grew up listening to Foster Hewitt on the radio and then his son Bill Hewitt on television on Hockey Night in Canada. Our generation grew up with Bob Cole. It was always Bob Cole and always Harry Neal. Bob. Yeah, absolutely. So... With fur- without further ado, we are going to end off tonight's show with a little tribute to Bob Cole. And uh, it starts off with uh, Coach's Corner. Don Cherry gave a shout out to him. So we will say goodbye for another episode of Cabin Sports Radio. And we will talk to you again next week and leave you with this. Well, anyway. you know, I, when I was a little boy, when I was young, I used to play road hockey. We used to come in. I used to foster. I used to have my cocoa and a bath. And, and it was Foster Hewitt. And then, and then when I was playing, it was Danny and Dick. They were always on. I remember lost in the St. Lawrence somewhere, and I heard them. They were big time. And then Bob, and then I, remember, I met Bob when I was uh, coaching the Boston Bruins, and he used to come in and make it very slow like that. And, uh, uh, you know, and they're all good. Don't get me wrong. Foster was good. Danny was good. But the best of all, and I think, and I've seen them all, is Bob Cole. That's it. Can't say any better than that, can I? You can't. Nope. And it's Fred, he saw it, dropped it back. Fred's keep picked it up, couldn't find it. Eindrman is turning and coming in. Another shot, score! Eindrman scores! Detroit wins the game! Detroit wins the series! And they go on! There's Gilmore, and Borshevsky. Borshevsky penetrates! Canadians win the game!